Hello everyone. Welcome to What Even Is This? Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's laugh at some batshit crazy people together. I identify as a transgender woman. I identify as a woman. So you're a biological male and you now identify as a woman. My biology shouldn't matter to you because you have nothing to do with my biology. So what about you makes you a woman? Because that's how I feel the most comfortable. So what you're, what when I'm you call you me a male, then I feel uncomfortable. It's as simple as that. And I'm when asking what qualities woman, make you a woman? When you call me a woman, I feel comfortable. What and then it's that simple. Is it, would you like it if I called you a man? No, because I'm not a man. Right. I am a woman. I was born with breasts and a vagina, and I have XX chromosomes. Okay, so the only difference between you and me is the way we were born. Hey, y'all. Let me introduce you to our non-binary alpaca. The kids voted on a gender-neutral name, Alex, for them. Alex was there to help me during the really quiet moments when nobody would talk during virtual learning. Yes, they were so quiet! But then I also took it as an opportunity to teach my students about how to respect people's pronouns. Did Alex ever get misgendered? Yes. But then it opened up some teachable moments about what to do when that would happen. For example, Hey Mr. Vung, did he just wake up from his nap? Oh, do you mean did they wake up from their nap? Yeah, they just did. I would apologize quickly, make the correction, and move on. I started off modeling how to correct somebody, and then afterwards my students would correct each other whenever somebody would misgender Alex here. Representation in the classroom matters. My kids were 5th graders and they still got a kick out of Alex. Oh yes, and here's Alex's friend, Lincoln the Llama, who goes by pronouns he him. At first, my students thought that he had very feminine features, so they thought that he was a girl. And this is why we should never assume somebody's gender just based on what they look like. Alright, Lincoln, say something. Hello. <laughs> my students were really surprised how low his voice sounded. Don't assume- Hey everyone! I don't know if I'm gonna post this or not, but I just need a fucking rant. Universal Labor Support just fucking called me. And the first thing they fucking did is fucking dead name me. Love that. We're off to a really fucking good start. They ask if I'm available for a fucking shift. In nine fucking weeks, they have not fucking scheduled me. First of all, mostly everyone who calls from labor support knows me as fucking Max, not fucking dead name. Getting off to a really fucking good start right there, aren't we? Second... Pretty much everyone I talk to knows about my fucking situation. They know that I'm homeless. It's not like I have a bed I can fucking crawl up in and take a nice fucking goddamn nap. I don't have a fucking accessible shower. I don't have anywhere to keep my fucking dog. And they're trying to fucking schedule me on Sunday. No fucking notice. Nobody calls me and says, hey, yo, we want to schedule you now. No, they ask if I'm available to their fucking needs after they fucked me over for nine fucking weeks. Go fuck yourself, Universal. Fuck you for dead naming me. Fuck you for not changing my fucking name on my ID. Fuck you for not understanding my situation. Fuck you for being transphobic. I am so fucking done with companies fucking us over. I am so sick and fucking tired of filling out application after fucking application for loans to get money to get ahead. I am so fucking done. When will these fucking companies learn? The whole reason why I'm in this situation is because they don't fucking pay me enough. And I'm not the only one. I hate living in my fucking car. I hate not being able to work. I hate not having a fucking roof over me and my partner's head. I keep trying doing everything I can to fucking live, to have a comfortable life, but it's not fucking enough because this country doesn't fucking believe that minimum wage should be able to pay all your bills comfortably. And I'm done. I'm fucking done. Since you're a conservative commentator, I think a lot of people could argue that, because you said that the left is trying to... Uh, basically fearmonger people couldn't people argue that you're doing the same by claiming that people are trying to destroy the family and trying to destroy and uh like mutilate people's genitals and stuff like that like plenty of people could make the same argument that you are doing the same thing that you're um claiming the left is doing well is it or is it not true that that children's genitals are being mutilated in the name of the transgender ideology do you have proof of that yes i do have you googled I, it oh i've googled plenty yes 
Well, that, see, that's the difference. When you say it, it, when you say that someone is fear mongering, there's a difference between warning people about the reality of what's happening versus pretending that someone's words, someone's words, literal words, like words can't actually hurt you. You're not hurt by my words right here. You're standing right there. You're perfectly safe. I'm standing right here using my words. Maybe we don't see eye to eye on this topic. I don't know what your politics are. But the fact of the matter is it's reality when you look at what's happening at gender clinics all across the country. When you look, I mean, Jazz Jennings, everyone's heard of Jazz Jennings, right? one of the most prominent trans, transgender young people in our country, um, this individual this was, is a male and had his genitals, he was castrated. Is that, not, is that not physical bodily harm, irrevocable bodily harm to this person? I mean, I don't know specifically about that person, but I think, okay. Um, I do think the claim that children are being, having their genitals mutilated across the country isn't true. So. Well, I encourage you to look it up because I think you might change your mind about the whole issue when you see the reality of the situation. It's horrendous and it's not something that should be left and right, Democrat or Republican. When you see what is actually begot of this ideology, it truly is horrendous. Children are having, young boys are having their penises cut off. They're being castrated. What happens is they take the skin. And I'm sorry this is graphic, but this is the reality of the situation. They take the skin of the penis and they invert it. They create a false hole in the groin, in the crotch of the young boy and create what they call a neo-vagina. Like, does that sound like something that you want to be happening to children in our country? I don't think so. It's horrendous. And I mean, there was, there was in one of the pivotal studies, studies that, that underpins the, the gender affirming model of care that kind of led to this transitional surgery, one of the 18 uh, year old young people who was, who was undergoing the surgery actually died from it because it's dangerous. Um, again, I highly recommend that you look it up because I think that we'd find common ground on that point and that you would not approve of young people's bodies being mutilated the way that they are when you see the reality of it. I don't provide services to police officers. We're going to talk about it today. Hi, I'm Eddie Harris Daylist in Portland, Oregon. I've had to enforce this rule recently. And I wanted to talk about it because I want people to know the why behind it. I am one of many people I know that don't provide their services, whether it be hair or something else, to people who participate in law enforcement. So that's not only police officers, but maybe that is um, guards in prisons and people that work for ICE and things like that. I would like to take a quick second to say that uh, the things I'm about to express are my beliefs and why I choose to do this. That might not be why everybody chooses to do this, uh, but this is why I choose to do it this way. The reason I want to talk about it is because recently that rule was enforced and I think that when people hear that rule, they think that it's like a FU rule. I personally don't like cops and so I'm not going to provide service to them because meh. But that's actually not the reason. There are plenty of people who I do not agree with on many topics that I will still provide hair services to. It is not a prerequisite for me that you agree with everything that I think to come get your hair done by me. However, one of the things I absolutely want to prioritize is the mental health and safety of all of my clients. In this chair, all textures are welcome, all gender expressions are welcome, no matter who you are. I am going to try my darndest, though I am only a human, to make this space uh, accessible to you and being dedicated to showing up like that for my clients can look uh, a lot of different ways for me it looks like making sure that i spend money and time and education on learning how to cut all different textures of hair i make sure i'm vocal about things that i believe in that are important to me and one of those things yes does mean not allowing members of law enforcement to be in my space not just because i don't like them not even most importantly for that reason most importantly, because I truly and deeply believe that by a member of law enforcement being in a space, they are actively making it unsafe for others in a community. Traditionally, and there is already so much evidence on it, so I'm not going to sit here and argue it with you, members of law enforcement massively unfairly target Black people, people of color, the queer community, the neurodivergent, sex workers, and so on. And those are my people. Those are the people that sit in my chair. Every single one of those things describes the people in my chair and I love them and I want this space to be safe for them. So by inviting somebody who participates in law enforcement and uh, allowing that person access to the information they could get from just coming to see me and being around those types of people, it's not worth it to me. It is not worth risking the safety of my clients to have people like that in my space. You don't have to agree with that. You absolutely don't. I have had a few gray area kind of things, um, like if somebody is married to a police officer, how fair is it to judge somebody for the actions of their spouse? 
that is a hard one currently. Um, the only people I will not serve directly are members who have chosen to serve in law enforcement of some kind, but it has way less to do with my personal beliefs on the matter and more to do with my concern for the safety of the people that I have in my chair because that is one of the most important things to me. Racism is not a choice. You were not taught to be racist. You, fellow white person, like everybody else, were born into a world that you did not create. Everything you inherited, whether biologically or socially, was not your choice. And that's the same thing with racism. We were born into a racial caste system in which white-bodied individuals are the oppressor class. Whether you wanted that designation or not, that's the system that you and I were born into. We had no choice in the matter. However, once you become aware of how things are, once you've become educated about your role in how things are, then you have a choice. Do you want to stand firm and uphold the system you've inherited? Fighting with anyone and everyone that brings up privilege, equity, justice, racial oppression, or do you want things to change? More often than not, those of us that are white are so preoccupied with trying to separate ourselves from the group to justify and set ourselves apart as the good or safe white person. But when you live in a racial caste system, there's no such thing. We're all complicit in upholding the system until we start pushing against it and fight to dismantle it like our lives depend on it, because they do. They might come with the best intentions. They also get caught in the trap. So the brain drain, Africa really needs the brains. Uh, we are the most intelligent race on the face of the planet. We invented almost everything that made uh, this society and every society on the face of the planet uh, in human. And I, when I mean human, I mean as in toilets, sanitary, everything comes from Africa. The chair, the traffic light, the car the computer, what is it we haven't created? But our brains are going across. There are more, I think, doctors uh, from Nigeria. Look at what the conservative ideas are. Oftentimes they're ideas that are racist, they're homophobic, they're transphobic. Our conservatives transphobic. They hate people who are trans. I mean, that's the definition of transphobic. They don't hate people who are trans. Well, they think people that are trans don't exist. Well, I think they think a biological man is a biological man. I. It depends on what your definition of a man is. Gender and biological sex are two different things. They're the same thing. They're not the same thing. The scientific the same. community disagrees with you. The scientific community does not disagree with me. How can you scientifically prove that gender and sex are the same thing? Scientifically prove gender is anything because gender is a social construct. But sex is not. Sure. That doesn't have anything to do with transgender. So someone thinking that they're a separate gender, they can just think whatever gender they want? Gender is something that we've invented. like. Gender has nothing to do with sex, like, at all. So men who want, who become a woman, right, they say, now I'm a woman, they're transition. Do you think they should be allowed in a woman's locker room? A trans female, who is a female, should be allowed to go in the female locker room, yes. So they have a penis and a female? They're a female, yeah. You can have a penis and be a female? Yes. Transgender female are female. Your chromosomes have nothing to do with gender. They're two different categories. And clarity over agreement on that one then. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having the chat. What's your name? So, Will. Will, Will Witt. All right. Yeah. Women's History Month was based off of International Women's Day, which is March 8th. And that was started by Clara Zetkin, who is a German activist, and she was not a nice white woman. She was an anti-war communist who literally ran against Hitler and the Nazi party. She fought for everyone. If you want to be a real feminist, then you fight for everyone. You fight for Palestinian women's rights. You fight for trans women's rights. You fight for black women's rights and indigenous women's rights. You fight for all women's rights. You fight for everybody's rights. Because when nice white women don't check themselves and their own privilege and the harm that they're doing, everybody else is having to compensate for it. Everybody else is having to suffer for it. Comfort is not a priority. Safety is. If you want to prioritize all women's safety, then stop being a nice white woman. Start Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.